three, we're going to talk about um, accumulated depreciation and how you do the adjustment for that transaction. So first of all, we have to talk about different categories of assets. So um, a lot of companies have different categories of assets. Current assets are going to be assets that can be turned into cash within a year. So if you look down here, things like um, cash, your bank, investments, inventory, things that can be turned into cash quickly within a year. We call those current assets. And then plant assets are going to be other things like machines, building, land, equipment, things like that, that you're going to probably use in your business for multiple years. And um, those are called plant assets. So when you have a plant asset, for many years, it's going to lose some value. Think about a car. You buy a brand new car off the lot. You drive. They say that it can lose a quarter of its value when you drive it off the lot. And so that would be kind of an example of, of an asset that loses value. That's what depreciation is um, when it loses value. And because we have this gap rule matching revenue with expenses, we have to keep track of that depreciation for all of those plant assets every year so that we can show what the value of each of those assets is at the end of the year. And we do that by taking that depreciation or that value that they've lost over that year. So a portion of the plant assets cost that goes away so that it depreciates, we are going to put that to an account called depreciation expense because when something loses value, an asset loses value, that's an expense to the business. So there are three factors that you have to take into consideration when you're looking at um, calculating how much depreciation you're gonna have for a plant asset. The original cost, the salvage value, and the useful life. So the original cost is anything that goes into you acquiring that asset to be used in your business. It might be the price of the asset. It might be if there's a delivery um, cost, if there's an installation cost, if it's a big piece of equipment that they have to come in and set up and there's a cost to that. All of that added together is what we call original cost. Then the salvage value is what you think that asset is going to be worth at the end. So an estimate of the amount that will be received for an asset at the time of the disposal. So you have the original cost and then salvage value is what do you think is going to be worth when you get rid of it, basically. Um, you don't know that for sure because you don't know. Are you going to keep that piece of equipment for five years, for 25 years, for 50 years? You don't really know when you buy it for sure how long you're going to keep it. So salvage value is something that we have to estimate. So a couple other things before we look at the transaction here. Um, the period of time that you think you're going to use that asset is called the useful life. And the total amount of depreciation expense has got to be then distributed evenly over how long you think you're going to have it, how that useful life. And so just kind of as an example, if you are going to buy a car and for $30,000 and you think you're going to drive that car for 10 years, and you think at the end of that 10 years, it's gonna be worth $8,000, then you're gonna take that other $22,000 and divide it up over those 10 years. That's kind of basically what we're doing. So two things you have to take into consideration here, physical depreciation and functional depreciation. Physical dep depreciation is basically the, the wear and tear on, on it. So wear and deterioration from aging and weathering. So if this was a car, it might be dings you get in a parking lot. It might be the mileage that goes on to it. Um, all those things will be considered physical depreciation. The, the, the interior gets worn as you use it year, you know, year after year, those kinds of things. Then functional depreciation is when it becomes obsolete or inadequate. And think about it like with a computer. They say the useful life of a computer anymore is about three years. And so you know, after three years, at least five years, um, you almost have to replace that because it's not going to work anymore on the new Wi-Fi and the new technology and all that kind of stuff. So 
any functional depreciation is when it becomes inadequate or obsolete. So an asset's inadequate when it can no longer perform what it's supposed to do at the proper efficiency. And it becomes obsolete when new stuff comes out. So like my example of a computer, old computers are obsolete. You can't really do much with them except sell them back to some place who's going to maybe use them for parts or something. So two different types of depreciation. So what we're going to look at in this example is what they call straight line depreciation. There are other types of depreciation we get into later on. Straight line is the easy one. Uh, you just record an equal amount of depreciation expense each year. So in my example, back to my car, if you have $22,000 of depreciation and you're going to have it for 10 years, you're going to take 22 divided by 10, 22,000 divided by 10, and you're going to depreciate an equal amount each of those years. So the way we figure this is we take the original cost minus the estimated salvage value equals that estimated total depreciation expense. So in the, the example they have on here, the original cost of whatever asset this was was $2,500. They think it's going to be worth $500 when they get rid of it. So $2,000 is what they have to depreciate. And they think it's going to be useful for five years. So they're going to take $2,000 divided by five and they're going to depreciate $400 every year for five years. And then we have to take about, look at accumulated depreciation. Accumulated depreciation is how much it, it grows each year. So if you think about going back to this example, we depreciate $400 the first year, then the second year you depreciate another $400, that accumulated depreciation would be $800. So in this example, $800 of accumulated depreciation in, in 2002, plus the $400 for the next year. So this would be after two years. Then you have the third year of depreciation you're adding in. The accumulated depreciation then is $1,200. You're just adding it together each year. You're accumulating it as you go each year. So the original cost of the plant asset minus the accumulated depreciation is called book value. So you have the original cost of $2,500, Right now, after year three, you've accumulated $1,200 worth of depreciation. So the ending book value that year is 25 minus 12 is 1,300. And if you were going to turn around then and try to sell this asset at the end of the third year, you would want to get $1,300 out of it. If you've ever paid attention to, to like vehicles, so my example of a car vehicle, they have this thing called the blue book for cars, which will tell you what the value of that car is after, and that changes every year. That's kind of what they're doing here. So to journalize this, gets a little bit sticky here. So I'm, we're going to, they have two different um, depreciations here. One is um, something for an office equipment and one is something for something that was store equipment. So two different things. If you have equipment you're using in your office, like your computers, that's store equipment. I mean, office equipment. If it's store equipment, it might be displays or the cash register or things like that. So they're just breaking those up into different assets. So at the end of each fiscal year, three green, our example in the book, has to bring the balance of each of the accumulated depreciation accounts up to date. And so they have to figure up that depreciation. So they calculate the depreciation expense for each plant asset, then the depreciation amounts for each of them, such as office equipment, are totaled. So you might have, like for office equipment, that might be multiple assets you're working with here, but they're all going to go to that one depreciation expense. It might be multiple store equipment assets, and they're all going to go to that one depreciation expense. So in this example, the balance of accumulated depreciation office equipment on December 31st is 6,189. The balance of that account needs to be increased by $7,485, which is the current year's depreciation. I don't know why they don't continue the example they give in the book over to the example here with the dollars, but they don't. So a whole new thing here. Um, so you have to, if you have to increase this accumulated depreciation, you're going to, because accumulated depreciation um, is an expense basically, or, or and it has a credit balance. 
So you have to increase it with a credit and then the expense is gonna increase with a debit. And then same thing down here, they're doing just for store equipment. They're increasing it by $9,830. So that transaction looks like this. So accumulated depreciation and for office equipment and store equipment are those um, contra accounts that we've talked about in the past. They contradict the rule. So we have office equipment value here, and then this is the accumulated depreciation. My dog is squeaking his ball, I apologize. Um, and so it has a credit balance. The office equipment has the debit balance. So when we do this transaction, expenses have debit balances. So depreciation expense is going to go up. Accumulated depreciation with it is going to go up. They're both going up, one with a debit, one with a credit. So that is how we do the adjusting entry for accumulated depreciation.